so, you know, we've talked a lot about OpenStack, and we've talked a lot about the, the different technologies that it can encompass. Ultimately, the point of all of that is to be able to run applications on top of it and to be able to build applications faster. And, you know, Lachlan uh, gave us an awesome demo around that. Well, our next speaker is, uh, is definitely an expert in the area of building, packaging, deploying applications on top of clouds, and I'm really excited to have her here. Welcome the COO of Bitnami, Erica Brescia. Thank you. And congratulations to everyone on the recent release of Liberty. It was so exciting to open up the 451 Group report the other day and see that over $1.2 billion in revenue will be generated related to OpenStack just this year. And that number is expected to double by 2017. It's absolutely incredible to see how far OpenStack has come in just over five years. As Jonathan mentioned, my name is Erica Brescia, and I'm the COO and co-founder of Bitnami. I'm here today to talk to you about banishing the shadow cloud. For those of you who haven't heard the term before, what I mean when I refer to shadow cloud is essentially any cloud other than the one that you're building or that you want your customers or users using. To give you a little bit of perspective on Bitnami, we package over 130 different applications and development environments, ranging from CRM and ERP platforms to online learning to Node, Rails, and PHP development environments. Our users come from all over the world and virtually every industry, and we have over a million deployments a month of all the applications that we package. Our users are developers, about 70% of them are developers, 20% are business users, and 10% are systems integrators. And they come from all over the world to deploy Bitnami apps, both locally and in cloud platforms. While we do support a number of smaller companies, over 10% of our user base comes from companies with 1,000 or more employees, including many of the world's major brands. They come from banks, pharmaceutical companies, governments, and more. In terms of cloud platforms that we support, we're on virtually every major cloud platform in the US, including Amazon, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. And I'm excited to pre-announce that we'll be releasing on Oracle Cloud Platform in just a few hours in San Francisco at Open World. Thank you. <laughs> We're on a couple of publicly available OpenStack-based clouds already, and we have more on the way. And it's been really exciting to hear more than one public cloud provider in the last couple of months talk about moving from their existing cloud platforms to OpenStack. I'm really excited to see that kind of momentum in the public cloud space. We've also contributed a number of application images, glance images, to the community app catalog that is currently being hosted by the OpenStack Foundation. So we have a huge range of users using Bitnami applications, both in the cloud and behind the firewall, for a huge variety of use cases. And I feel like that gives us a very unique perspective on what people are looking for in a cloud platform. At the end of the day, people really want two things. They want ease of use and a great ecosystem. In terms of ease of use, they want an app store that's populated with secure, tested, and reliable images that they can deploy quickly to get up and running with whatever it is that they're trying to do on the cloud. And in terms of an ecosystem, they want to see tools, services, and documentation that can help them get up and running. If you think about it, it's actually easier to go to a public cloud platform today than to do something locally. If you're trying to run in a traditional IT environment, downloading a huge uh, VM to run on your hypervisor, it slows down your system and takes longer than just going to a cloud platform saying, I want a node environment, and getting up and running in a few clicks. That's the experience that you have to provide if you want people to use your OpenStack-based cloud platform. 
I'll dig into all of these things a little bit deeper later in my talk. So, what are the consequences of not meeting expectations around ease of use and providing a great ecosystem? The answer is very simple. People just won't use your cloud. And unfortunately, you'll probably be the last person to know about it. At Bitnami, I see this all of the time. I've had multiple people come to me and ask me to build them for things like office furniture just to fly under the radar of their IT environments. With the exception of highly regulated and locked down environments, people will choose the path of least resistance every single time. So, if you want people using your platform, you need to provide a great experience out of the box. So, what are the main things that people are looking for when deploying a cloud platform? I think it's actually not cost savings or performance, although those are obviously incredibly important. Everybody certainly wants to save money. But it's actually agility. Companies need to be able to get solutions to market faster. They need to go from years to months or even weeks. The attributes that I'm going to cover later in this presentation are actually going to support or their consequences of, um, of trying to provide a cloud that provides a consistent development and deployment experience. So ease of use is a really key feature and very near and dear to my heart at Bitnami as that's one of the things that we're focused on. People are used to installing apps on their iPhone or Android phone in just a few clicks. They want an app store-like experience. People don't want to have to, down, or to read lengthy user guides or follow complex deployment processes just to get up and running in the cloud. You have to provide the iPhone or smartphone-like experience in order to get people using your cloud platform. The days of RTFM are truly dead. And this applies to every aspect of your platform, from the sign-up process, to the app marketplace, to the deployment process, to the APIs and management console. I've actually had more than one cloud provider ask me to fax in forms to get my cloud environment provisioned. That's right, we're talking about using technology from the 1840s to get a cloud up and running. If you're doing that, I'm sorry to tell you, but you are doing it wrong. If you want people to use your cloud platform, you have to make the onboarding process extremely easy. And this applies to your partners as well. It makes a world of difference if you can provide a way for partners, at least in a public cloud environment, to self-service um, with listing their applications and maintaining them. We've integrated with a whole slew of different cloud marketplaces, and I can tell you that me and, and my team have felt the pain of not having this firsthand. It slowed down our process of getting new applications updated, and it slows down things on the side of the cloud vendor. So please focus on making it incredibly easy for application vendors to list their products and keep those up to date. If you don't do that, even if they get their application listed, they won't maintain it. And you'll not have that healthy ecosystem that users are looking for, again, at least in a public cloud environment. I think most vendors understand this in concept. Everybody knows that you need to make things easy but I continue to see people underinvesting in this piece when it comes to reality, and it hurts them in terms of adoption. People will just go elsewhere if it's not easy enough. Ensuring consistency on your cloud also helps people get the most out of it and provides a more secure environment. You need to capture organizational best practices in your tooling. For example, if you've standardized around things like governance, or logging, or monitoring, build these into a base images that can be shared across your team and individual developers. Also, 
provide people with reusable components that they can use as building blocks to bring new solutions to market faster. This will save you a ton of time and also provide a much more secure platform because everybody is using a shared set of components that can be updated more easily. Automation is obviously at the core of any cloud solution. So I'm sure none of you are surprised to hear me mention it today. It's important that you integrate with either your internal or external customers tooling, but also to support new and emerging standards like the Kubernetes orchestration platform. This will save your users time and reduce the time to market for new solutions and production applications. It also obviously facilitates ease of use and makes operating in hybrid cloud environments much easier as the tooling can be shared across environments. So, curation. We've all seen what happens in unpoliced marketplaces and repositories. Users don't want to have to go through a sea of different images trying to find the one that meets their needs. They also don't want to see 20 versions of the same application image and try to figure out which one is going to best meet their needs. At best, they'll waste a ton of time trying to find the right one. And at worst, they'll pick one at random, and you'll be left to pick up the pieces. So make sure that the applications in your library are always up to date and maintained. This is especially important in the case of things like Heartbleed, uh, you need to be able to update your images incredibly quickly. And having a curated set of images that is well-maintained will help you to do that. Finally, help people move from development to production. You need to support the full application lifecycle from development and testing on to production. Again, I think a lot of people understand this in practice, but the tools are not quite there yet. And this should certainly be the, the final goal. You don't want people running OpenStack as a separate cloud to their real infrastructure and then having to move things over. You'll just lose out on a lot of benefits of the cloud that way. So we've covered a lot of the characteristics of what it takes to build a great cloud platform. And this is what you need to do in order to keep users using your platform rather than going to the shadow cloud. The key is to focus on building a complete solution that meets the needs of your users, whether internal or external, rather than focusing on the underlying technology components. Users want speed, ease of use, consistency, automation, and curation. And the OpenStack distros are a fantastic starting point for this. But they're not complete solutions yet. So you need to go out and partner with third parties to provide the complete solution that your users need. There are a lot of great technology partners out there that can help you do that. And you need to provide a library of curated, tested, and standards-based images that make it easy for new users to get up and running on your platform. Murano and Heat from OpenStack are great starts to that but they still need to be populated. At the end of the day, if you want users to stay on your platform rather than going around it to other clouds, you need to make it more convenient and easier to use than any other cloud platforms. And that's the only way to banish the shadow cloud and keep users on your platform. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. That was, uh, I think that was all really useful information that uh, is, is right in line with what we hear from, um, from every operator that we bring up here. They want to build an environment that is uh, as appealing or more appealing than the other options out there. That's what we have to deliver with OpenStack. So thank you for that.